This program is based on factual events and deals with child custody rights of a gay parent. Court proceedings are based on the actual transcript. Names have been changed to ensure the privacy of those involved. how we could save some time. Yeah. Well, don't waste time making me wait to hear it. Well, I was thinking, see, if we took all this stuff and, and moved it into the front room, Yeah. and then while you and Barbara was putting it where it ought to go, somebody else could drive back and get another load and then drive it on back here. Oh. Hey, that's a wonderful idea. Let me see if I got it straight now. Barbara and me stay here and unpack the cartons, and uh, somebody else drives the car back and gets some more stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you uh, have any candidates for that job? Yeah. Somebody who, who just got his learner's permit, maybe? I guess if you're caught, you're supposed to surrender. Some say that, son. No, Mama, I surrender. A toilet seat is a very personal thing. I know that. Well, why don't you know enough to put it down when you're done? Because I figured you'd have enough sense to make sure it was down before you... before. Well, I'm not used to looking anymore. Well, you're gonna have to get used to it. There's just been a truce declared, and it's been declared because people scrapping are not people working, and we need people working, you two. But do you know what he did? I know what he did. Every woman alive knows what he did. Come on, move it. Let's get some more of that stuff. Where, Billy? You ever clean these things? Clean them all the time. Yeah, first of every month. Okay, Peggy, you down for the count? It's no fair. How come I have to go to bed earlier than everybody else? Life isn't fair. It isn't fair that Joanne Woodward is rich and good-looking and has Paul Newman. But what are you gonna do? Who's Paul Newman? Who's... Just go to sleep. Now, listen, honey. 
you get scared or anything, like this being the first night, you just yell and I'll come running, okay? Do grown-ups ever get scared? Lord, yes, Billy. What scares grown-ups? Usually other grown-ups. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Don't forget to use your signal. Oh, there's supposed to be behind me. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. See, you're building up habits for the future. So you always want to put on your turn signal every time you change lanes. For corn's sake. Oh, David, you're a terrific driver. Now, I just want you to be as good as you possibly can. Stop that. Sorry. That Corrine Everly you've been talking about? Yeah, but I can't get a date with her. Why not? Handsome guy like you, just walk right up and ask her. Because she isn't going to go out with anybody who doesn't have his own car. Oh. David, you are beating a dead horse. The money just isn't there. That's all there is to it. We've got other needs to come first, is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's absolutely it. We, meaning you and Barbara, and all those kids. That's correct. Oh, honey, you know, I still gotta get that reading tutor for Billy. And then school started, we got all those clothes. There are 101 Mom? things we gotta get before we can even talk about a car. What? Are you a lesbian? Outside of the Tooth Fairy and, and Santa Claus, stuff like that. I don't think I ever lied to you. And I'm not going to start now. So I'll answer that question. If you're sure you want me to. Yes, I am. I am Elizabeth. Well, there was all those nights you and Barbara were out together, and us moving in with her, and then you two getting a bank account together in the one bed there. I don't know. It's just, just all started me to thinking. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I... You want to ask me any questions, or... I don't know, would it be better... Maybe if I just... Talk for a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, it'd be easy if you just talked. Okay. What me and Barbara got... is... just care for each other. It's just as simple as that. Now, I know a lot of people think that it's wrong. And I know a lot of people say that two homosexuals can't really care about each other for a long time. Well, I, I don't know about anybody else. I just know about Barbara and me. And it's not that way with us. I don't think it ever will be. You can't gu guarantee that. No, I can't. People don't come with guarantees. Do you know, when your father and me got married, we thought that was going to last forever. But honest people make mistakes, David. That's what happened to us. I mean, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't my fault. It just ended. died in its sleep. 
you might say. It, it's just so hard for me to understand, Mom. I know. I don't understand all of it either. Maybe nobody does. But I hope you do understand. But I love you, son. That's the only really important thing between you and me. I love you. And you're still the best mom in the world. You want to drive? You go ahead. You were doing swell. Something I couldn't tell you at supper. What was that? David asked. About what? About us. About you and me. Lord God. What'd you tell him? I just told him the truth. what he said. That was just fine. But I don't know if he meant it. How are we going to know if he meant it or not? Well, we just wait. We'll wait. Pretty soon we'll know. His wife say, you hear me? Yes, sir. What's the second thing? Second? Say. Oh, yeah. You don't get out of here without giving me a kiss. Have a good time. Yeah. Now mind your manners. Well, okay. Here you go. Thank you. Monday. Bye. Have a good time. Take care. What do you say, David? Hi, Dad. Good to see you, boy. How you doing? I'm okay. Way to go. Dad, don't. Why not? Well, there's something me and you got to talk about.
morning, Linda Ray. Good morning, Miss Allen. to Robinson gets back from a vacation. Mm. Why would anyone want to come back here? Home away from home. Oh, speaking of home, how's that new place? Oh, it's terrific. We got most everything squared away now. Mm -hmm. David's been over to my mama's for a couple of weeks helping her out. Oh, holy gamoly, Linda Ray. I would forget my head if it wasn't fastened on. Your mama called here about 20 minutes ago. And she wanted you to call her right back. Hmm? Yeah. She said what she wanted? No, no. She just said that she wanted you to call her right back. I'm sorry. Hello? Mama, it's Linda Ray. Mama? I'm returning your call. David's fine, Linda Ray. Well, then, how come you're calling me here? I want you to stop over here on your way home from work. Well, sure. Can you tell me why, at least? Just you stop over. We'll talk then. Mama? In the kitchen. to his father's. What do you mean, drove out? Drove out in what? His pa bought him a car. LTD or LSC or something like that. I don't know anything about those things anyway. Mike bought David a car? That's what I said. Well, I suppose it makes sense in a way. Be a lot easier for him to get a job. Still, I, I wish that Mike had spoke to me first. I mean, David is a, a real good driver. And I everything. think that the whole thing is absolutely disgusting, Linda Ray. About the car, you mean? No. About the kind of life you've been living with Barbara Moreland. I knew it. I knew it for a long time. I closed my eyes to it. I looked the other way. I shoved my head in the sand, thinking, not my little girl, not my Linda Ray. She wouldn't do anything like that to me, not to her own mother. I haven't done anything to you, Mama. Broken my heart is all you've done. Made it impossible for me to ever look a friend in the face without knowing that they're wondering what kind of a mother I must be. What kind of a mother raises a pervert for a daughter? That's all you've done for me. Made me look like some kind of a monster. Oh, Mama, please. Do you know what the Bible says about you? Do you know what the holy, sanctified word of the Lord Jesus Christ says about women like you and Barbara Moreland? I love her, Mama. You say that in my house! I have hurt nobody. A person doesn't get to choose everything in their life. Some things... You have to believe that way. Myself, I think Mike's probably right. Mike? 
Why are we talking about Mike? On account of the harm you're doing to Billy. Harm that you're doing to your own flesh and blood. Mike's got himself a lawyer. He's going to serve some legal papers on you. Legal papers? What kind of legal papers? Linda Ray, Michael's going to take you to court. He's going to take Billy away from you. And that's a God's honest truth. You don't think that he could do that, do you? I don't know, Linda Ray. I'm no lawyer. Maybe you could ask somebody down at the bank. I don't think so. They're all into money. Yeah, I know that. It's... I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to get an answer from somebody. I'll give you an answer. There's no finer mother to her boy than you are to Billy. And that's the God's honest truth. We both know that. Barbara. If Mike goes ahead with this thing and we decide to fight it, we're going to have to go into court. In public. Newspapers. Do you know what that could mean? Oh, it could mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it could mean our jobs, this house, everything. I don't know that I have the right to ask that of you. I don't know you have the right not to ask me. Shutting me out's no favor, Linda Ray. Ms. Linda Ray Gettner, please. That's me. Ms. Gettner, this is a notice of an action being instituted uh, with your party. Thank you. Have a nice night now. Let's see now. See what we're confronted with here. Your ex-husband has some pretty harsh allegations here. Says you and Mrs. Moreland been living in a homosexual relationship as man and wife. Says you held wild parties for the purpose of openly engaging in homosexual activities. That's a damn lie. Says vulgar language was used in front of the children. Excuse me, Mr. Mack. We know what it says. We read all the charges. And there's not one of them that's true. You and Mrs. Gettner are not homosexuals, then. Because that's what it says here. Well, no, that part is true enough. That part might be enough for a jury. It's a good thing that the child involved is a male. Why is Billy being a male good for our case? I can't see it make any difference. <laughs> well, if it were a girl, the jury might naturally assume that you'd be trying to indoctrinate the child into this lesbian lifestyle of yours. I don't think this is going to work out. Why is that, Mrs. Gittner? Well. I'm just a layperson, and I don't know much about the law and all. But I believe a person who says what you just said and believes it is an ass. Thank you, sir. Ladies, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to pass on representing you in this. 
I mean, it's not so much in response to the legal merits of your situation, but uh, I don't think I'd be giving you a fair shake. Why? Well, this is getting there. I don't happen to believe that your little boy would be better off living with you. I don't think I'm a bigot. I don't think I'm approved. But I think you're dead wrong about this thing. Well, Mrs. Gettner, I don't want to take up your time when nothing's going to come of it. I understand that child custody cases are heartbreaking for the people involved, and I don't mean to minimize that for a minute. However, it's just not the sort of case that Richard, Mr. Cannon, and I went into practice to handle. I don't think I understand what you mean. Well, Miss Levis and myself sort of have an understanding that we would uh, concentrate on important issues when we set up this office. And uh, your case, while I'm sure it has merit, it just doesn't fall in that category. Lesbians aren't important. Please? Me and Linda Ray, we're lesbians. Linda Ray's little boy being taken away because of that, because of what we are. Now he alleges that you'd run away with the children. I got $113 in the bank. How far am I going to run with that? And he alleges that David was so upset by the relationship between you two that he uh, moved in with his father. David was bribed away with that car. And he alleges that you held wild parties for the purpose of openly engaging in homosexual activities. That's a lie. That's a flat-out lie, and he knows it. I can't believe he'd say that. Can you prove it's a lie? Well, no. How can you prove something like that? But I'm going to be under oath, aren't I? And so is Barbara, for that matter. It doesn't matter what you say or what Barbara says. There's no jury's going to believe either one of you. And I'm not so sure they ought to. Come right down to it. Why don't you think they ought to believe us? Because you're both dykes. All you care about, really, is yourself and your own sick, twisted version of reality. You'd pick up pieces of meat a blind dog would cross the street to avoid. You'd make a pass at a rock if someone put panties on it. You're a threat and a disgrace to every decent woman who ever drew a breath. I love my son very much. And what you just tried isn't going to work. Not even in court? Not even in court. Richard? Agreed. Penny. Oh, I'm just thinking about Mama. Right or off, Linda Ray, that bridge is burned. No, I don't think so. Why not? Oh, it's just the way she looked right after she slapped me. She looked just like... Wait, she looked just like Mama. <laughs> Any trouble getting time off for those interviews with the psychologists? Only they don't call them interviews, they call them evaluations, whatever that means. You seem like a confident woman, Mrs. Gettner. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I am in, uh, in some things, I suppose. What aren't you confident about? Um, what do you mean exactly? Mm. What worries you? Everybody has worries. Oh, I... Just the regular things, I think. You know, money. My job. Oh, whether something's happened, the country go to war. Do you worry about war a lot? Oh. Uh, well, what, what's a lot? You tell me. What do you think a lot is? Uh, 
Your lawyers are quite correct. I do agree with the stand taken by the American Psychiatric Association. That homosexuality is not a mental illness or an aberration. Essentially just an alternate lifestyle. Then will you testify for me at my child's custody hearing? I hope that won't be necessary. Why? Well, it will take time away from my other patients, for one thing. And to put it bluntly, it's an unpopular cause, and I'm no martyr. But if it's necessary, would you testify? Yes, ma'am. The chaplain told me about this custody matter that's uh, going to come up in court. I hope it goes well for you. Well, thank you very much. But I think it might be wise uh, if you didn't wear your name tag until it's all resolved. You understand. Yes, ma'am, I do. I'll get to your address after I finish this. Said they wanted us to look nice in the courtroom, so. I wish to hell I'd never met you. What? I said, I wish I'd never met you. Want to live alone? No, I don't want to live alone. I... I don't know what I want. You want to go back to Mike? Well, at least when I was with Mike, I had Billy and David. Those boys are everything to me. And I'm nothing, is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, if I hadn't met you, all I'd be is a divorced woman, living alone. There'd be no way you could take Billy away from me. Can't you understand that, at least? At least? At least? I think I've been doing a fair amount of understanding around here. I think I've been doing my share and more than a little bit of yours, my friend. I come to pick up Billy. Dad asked me to. He'll be here in a second. No wreath? It's almost Christmas. You usually have a wreath up by now. I'm missing. Bye, Mom. See you Sunday night. Have a good time. Hello. Wow. Is that the new car? It's fantastic. <laughs> Granny already knew. That sure is a good-looking car. It, it didn't have nothing to do with me moving out to Daddy's. No, I didn't say it did. By the way, you drive could turn out to be a big gas guzzler. How do you plan on keeping it running? Well, I'm looking for a job. Well, listen, you know, um, just till you get a job, why don't you take one of my gasoline credit cards? No. You could charge it. No, Mom. Well, I want you to. Just, no. Hello? Linda Ray? It's your mother.
Hello? Linda Ray? Yeah, it's Mama. Mama? Linda Ray, I can understand if you don't want to talk to me, but I'm asking you to just at least listen for a little bit, all right? All right. I'm down at the stop and shop, and some people here have been telling me about that man, that lawyer that Mike went out and got for himself. And I thought maybe you'd like to know about the man. Okay, go ahead. Well, his name is Dwayne Stapler. And they say he's about as bright as a dime and just about as deep. He's supposed to be the smartest turkey there is when it comes to jury trials. And Mama? Yes, Linda Ray? Are you trying to make up? I believe so. I believe that's just exactly what I'm trying to do. Oh, Mama, I missed you so much. Linda Ray? Lin Linda Ray, you there, honey? Hello, Mrs. Honeycutt, this is Barbara. Oh, I made her cry, didn't I? I didn't want that. Believe me, your call is the best thing in the world for her. I'll have her call you, okay? All right. You tell her I'll be home in ten minutes. All right, I'll tell her. Bye. Bye. Why do you think it is? What? Why do they call it gay? Here they are. going to be like that every day? In this case, I'm afraid so. How are you? Richard, Dwayne, this is uh, Linda Ray Gettner. Linda Ray, this is Dwayne Stabler. Please meet you, ma'am. Representing Mike. Ma'am, Dwayne Stabler? Mike? You'll be right here. I hope we can get this business wrapped up before the holidays. I think that'll be a blessing for all concerned, don't you? Yeah. Staying with you and that good friend. It's something that I've got to do. I won't put up with it. I've got to do it, that's all. Well, then we'd best get on with it. jury members, there are a number of factors you should be aware of. Unlike other trials involving a jury, your verdict in this matter need not be unanimous. If ten of you rule in one way, then that's the verdict which will stand. Another difference you'll see is that there are three separate counsels present. Mr. Staber there represents Michael Gettner, the child's father. Ms. Levis and Mr. Cannon there represent Linda Ray Gettner, the child's mother. And the third gentleman, Mr. Sidowitz, has been appointed by the court to ensure that the interests of the little boy, Billy Gettner, are properly looked after and protected. Now, in a previous hearing, another son, David, has opted to reside with his father. And, of course, the courts will honor that request. Very well.
well. Mr. Stabler, if you please. They will say to you that this case involves gay rights. That this woman here, Linda Ray Gettin, by her own admission, a lesbian, is being persecuted because of her sexual preference. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, nothing could be further from the truth. The only rights involved in this case are the rights of little Billy Gettner. His right to be raised in a proper, God-fearing home. Our only concern here, the chief overriding concern of everyone involved in this case, is as simple as can be. What is best for the child? What is truly best for the little boy? Billy. If it's proved that Linda Ray Gettner is a thoughtless, unfeeling mother, then you should definitely remove Billy from her home. And if it's shown that Billy has in any way been harmed by her manner of raising him, then you should definitely award Billy's custody to his father. But we don't believe either of these things will be proven. What will be established is simply that Linda Ray Gettner seeks human comfort and companionship in a way different from you and I. I see you. You don't have to approve of it. But she ought not to be punished for it, either. And removing Billy from her care would punish her. Even more unfairly, it would punish Billy by taking him from the mother that he loves very, very much. I call your first witness. Call in Ray Gettner, please. Linda Ray Gettner to the stand. Barbara, you'll be called to testify a little later on, hand. so you'll have to leave the court while Linda Ray's on the stand. The testimony you're about to give in the case now pending before the court should be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. State your full name. Linda Ray Gettner. Please be seated. Ms. Gettner, were you homosexual when you met Barbara Moreland? Yes. I was a lesbian when I first met Barbara Moreland. Approximately how long ago was that, ma'am? About two and a half years ago. Where did you meet? At the home of some friends. Party of some kind? No, it wasn't a party. It was a... Uh, Mm, no, I'll get together. After this first meeting, you decide to see each other again? Yes. After that first time, you started to, uh, to date or to court one another? We went together. Well, would this be much the same way a, uh, a man might call on a lady and take her out? Pretty much. Would you call on her, or would she call on you? Objection, Your Honor. This line of questioning does not go to Mrs. Gettner's competence as a mother. She's already admitted she's a lesbian. The only purpose to this line of questioning is to inflame the jury. Your Honor, in qualifying the jurors, they each admitted a lack of knowledge about homosexuality. I share that lack of knowledge. <laughs> now, Ms. Liebes claims that her client's lifestyle makes no difference. But how's the jury going to decide whether or not this lifestyle has any effect on the raising of the child if I'm not allowed to ask questions about that lifestyle? Yes, I'll overrule the objection. Ms. Gettner, uh, the question was about, uh, was about the date. Who instigated this date? It was a mutual thing. And uh, sometimes you would uh, go out on the town, so to speak? Sometimes. Did you ever go out and have a drink? 
Yes, sometimes we went out at night. Mm -hmm. And when you went out at night, wh what bars did you frequent? We went to Le Rendezvous. Le Rendezvous? That's here in this city, ma'am? Yes, sir. I don't know the exact address. Well, I've been in a few bars in my time, but I don't think I've ever been in that one. <laughs> what, uh, what do you do in this bar? We'd go in and we'd have a drink. Do they dance in this bar? Yes, they do. With whom would you dance when you uh, went in there? Your Honor, I'll have to repeat our objection. He is obviously trying to inflame the jury by conjuring up spectacles of what goes on inside a homosexual bar. This has no bearing on the best interests of this child. Your Honor, I'm not trying to inflame anyone. I am simply trying to gain information about this homosexual lifestyle, which they say has no bearing on the upbringing of the child. I don't know how I'm going to do that unless I ask this witness questions about how a person like that lives. Well, let's move on to matters involving the child and the life pattern of the child. Were there any other bars you went to? Your Honor, he's pursuing the same line of questioning. Your Honor, I'm sick this of this. This has no relevance to information. I said I'll sustain control. the objection. And I want to caution both counsels to refrain from any further outbursts. Please, I know it's a lot of trouble, but you just got to help me out. Aunt Nedry's going to be 85 next month, and Lord knows what could happen if she was to read about the trial. If you'll just take the newspaper off the porch, I'll make sure to call her while Cronkite's home. You're a doll. Thanks. Bye. You going to print what I was talking about? Leave it. You know, maybe for the future, you got to learn about off the record. Off the record? means I'm more or less honor-bound not to use it. Off the record? I remember. And what do you mean, a loving relationship with Barbara Moreland? I mean I love her as an individual. Do you love her more than you love your sons, David or Billy? Objection. The question is hypothetical. Objection's overruled. Answer the question, please. And the question is, do you love Barbara Moreland more than you love your sons, David or Billy? That's like, that's like asking if, if, I, if I loved Mike more than the boys when him and me were married. Ma'am, I don't think we need your comment on the question. What we need is your answer. Please. The same. I love them both the same. You love Barbara Moreland and your sons the same? Yes. No difference. She's answered the question twice now, Your Honor. Jackson sustained. Let's move ahead, Mr. Stabler. Very well, Your Honor, let's. Now, you regard Barbara Moreland as your mate, your spouse? I do. And how long have you uh, been with her now? Two and a half years. You ever slept with anyone else in that time? Never. Drawing your attention back to your present home life, ma'am. Do you ever show affection for Ms. Moreland in your home? In what way? Well, uh, for example, uh, I've seen parents, my own, uh, when one would come home, the other might give him or her a kiss or a hug, a show of affection, of love. No. No, never in front of Billy. Oh, you never show affection for Miss Moreland in your home? Oh, I... Well, I'm... Billy... Billy realizes that I love Barbara very much. I and Billy, uh, is a nine-year-old boy. How would he know that? Because we do everything together. Who does he think Miss Moreland is? A uh, lady that we live with. What's he call her? Barbara. Barbara? Sometimes he gets mixed up. He calls her Mama. <laughs> They're very close. Miss Gettner, sitting here today, do you have any preference as to whether you were a heterosexual person or a homosexual person?
I would be exactly what I am. My question to you as a mother is this. If it comes down to your homosexuality and the son you've got left, which are you going to choose? Your Honor, I will object to the hypothetical nature of this question. He is calling for this witness not to recite any facts involved with this lawsuit, but to respond to a hypothetical I'll situation. I'll overrule the objection. Would the reporter read the question, please? If it comes down to your homosexuality and the son you've Honor, got left... Your Honor, for the purposes of the record, I wish to object to this question on the grounds that it calls for a speculative answer. I'll overrule your objection. My question to you as a mother is this. If it comes down to your homosexuality and the son you've got left, which are you going to choose? That's... That's not a choice I've got. Miss Gettner, please. I'm not going to lose the only son that I have left. Ma'am, please, just answer this, this question. This situation is not a risk. Ms. Gettner, and if it did no, I hate to interrupt you. And I don't want to be abrupt. But this is a very important lawsuit, and this is a very important topic of discussion. Now, I've asked you a question, and we would like a yes or a no, or I refuse to answer, not a speech. I refuse to answer. <laughs> Honest to God, you've got no idea what it's like in there. Especially when that stable gets going at you. Oh, I bet you were great. Oh, no. You know, Mama told me how smart he is. And he sure is. But she didn't tell me how tough it would be. Just answering the questions and not starting to argue. Excuse me. Are you speaking to me? You don't happen to work for a newspaper or a radio station or anything like that. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, just so there's no misunderstanding, what me and my friend were just talking about is all off the record. Well, let's go give that herd of photographers out there what it is they want. What's that? Picture of two lesbians coming out of a ladies' room together. Oh. Just kidding. Oh, 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 for you, isn't it? I guess. I was just reading this catalog. Look here. This is what I'm giving my mom for Christmas. Every time it's advertised on TV, she tells me how much she wants one. Telescopic fishing rod, hmm? She really wants one bad. Then we'll have to get her one. I'll send her up to give you a good night kiss in a minute. Barbara, did Susan's father, the guy you married, ever try to do what my dad's trying to do? Take Susan away from me, you mean? Yeah. No, honey. He loves Susan a lot, and he wants her to be happy, and he knows that she's happy here. And uh, he knows that not all people are the same, and he's able to accept that. Hope you guys get to keep me. Me too. Good night now. Okay. Ms. Moreland, do you think this is the age of the homosexual? I think people may be more aware of homosexuals now. Think they ought to be encouraged? No, neither encouraged or discouraged, uh, just admitted. How many women were there before you met Linda Ray Gettner, if you can recall? I can recall. There was just one. How long did uh, that relationship last? Five years. You didn't marry that lady, did you? No, sir, I don't believe the law would allow that. <laughs> did you love that lady? Yes, sir. You love her like you uh, love Linda Ray Gettner? No, I love Linda Ray more. How do you love her? How? I love 
being with her. I love doing things with her. I love enjoying the children with her. I love reading the Bible with her. The Bible? <laughs> Are you a Christian lady, Ms. Moore? Yes, sir, I am. Believe in the teachings of the Bible? Yes, sir, I do. Do you have any idea what the Bible has to say about this topic that we're discussing here today? Homosexuality? I do. Well, would you tell us about that, please? Well, I can't recite the exact Objection, words. Objection, Your Honor. Mrs. Moreland is not testifying as a theological expert. Objection overruled. We can permit her to testify as to her own opinion, not expert testimony, just her opinion. Ms. Moreland. Well, the scriptures that I read are speaking of a situation where people are forced into doing things. And force has nothing to do with the situation I'm living in. Are you aware, that you, you've heard of people saying that the Bible condemns homosexuality? I have heard of it, yes. But different people interpret the Bible in different ways. I personally believe in John 3.16 and I believe I am saved. Are you and uh, Linda Ray Gettner sharing the expenses of this trial with legal fees and so forth? Yes, sir, although we cannot handle them all. Somebody else is helping you out then? Yes, a couple of organizations are. Would you name them for us, please? The National Organization for Women, the Daughters of Belitis. What is that last one? The Daughters of Belitis. It's a lesbian organization. Well, it's nice that you have a organization to help you out? Wish we had one. <laughs> <sighs> Ms. Moreland, what caused you to be homosexual? It's a hard question, sir. That's a hard topic, ma'am. I have no earthly idea, sir. It just happened. That's a fair answer. Pass witness. Barbara, several references were made to the Bible a few moments ago. And possibly I'm not as well versed on that as I ought to be. You mentioned John 3.16. Would you tell us what that says, please? Yes, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish from this earth, but have everlasting life. Do you believe in God, Barbara? Yes, I do. Also, during the questions from Mr. Stabler, an organization was named the Daughters of Belitis. This is not a subversive organization, is it? No, it is not. Isn't its purpose to convert heterosexual couples to homosexuality? No, it is not. One last question. Have you noticed any change in Billy Gettner since his custody case began? Only one. Which is? He's afraid he's going to have to leave his mother. That's the witness. No further questions. Mr. Sidowitz, anything to add? No questions, Your Honor. Call David Gettner to the stand. Mr. Stabler, it's rapidly approaching the noon hour. I think we'd be well advised to take our lunch in recess and start fresh with your next witness. Fine with me, Your Honor. Very well. You're excused. Court stands adjourned at 1.30. It's a note about It's my mama. It's no problem, is it? I, I don't know. She wants me to have lunch with her. She says it's important. I don't like what you and Barbara are doing. I don't like it one little bit. But you're mine. I gave birth to you. And you just don't turn your back on your own. That's why I figure I gotta tell you what I heard about Mike. About his getting this 18-year-old girl pregnant and helping to pay for the abortion. Now, I don't know the why of it firsthand, but the people down at the store said that Mike got this 18-year-old girl pregnant and paid for getting rid of the baby. Well, 
I guess you better write the names down for me. I gotta get back pretty soon. Is David talking this afternoon? I'd be there. But, oh, no, don't come. Mr. Stable's not gonna call Barbara to the stand anymore, so she can be in court now. That'll be a help. I expect it will. You got nothing to worry about from David. You're his mama, and he's got a good heart. I was embarrassed by my mother being a homosexual. Now that you're living with your father, is your life any different? Well, yes, sir, it is. What ways? Well, when I first moved there, I was kind of nervous, uptight about everything. Since I've been living with Dad and his second wife, I've been able to do things, go hunting, fishing. It's been good. I just think it's a more suitable environment to be where a man and a wife live together than where it's just two women, like, like where I was before. According to your mother, you're an average student. Is that correct? It was when I was living with her. What about now? I've got about a B average now. B average? Good. Good for you. Mention has been made of a car that your father purchased for you. Got that have anything to do with your moving out there? No, sir, it did not. This testifying stuff isn't much fun, is it? No, sir, it isn't. David, do you remember the uh, first time I met you, the first time you came to my office? You remember that I told you you didn't have to testify if you didn't want to? Yes, sir, I remember. And do you remember what you told me then in reply? I said I felt I'd been given a chance to get out of what I was living in. And I felt my little brother, Billy, shouldn't have to live with what I did. Thank you, David. Pass witness. David, do you recall the pretrial hearing? Yes, ma'am. Did you say at that earlier hearing that your mother's homosexuality was the reason you left home? No, but it wasn't relevant then. At the pretrial hearing, did you testify that the car that your father bought for you after you left your mother's house was very important to you? Well, it wasn't the most important thing in my life. I did want one. David, can you honestly tell this jury that your father buying you a car had nothing whatsoever to do with your leaving home? Yes, ma'am. I can say that. Did you say at the earlier hearing that you loved your mother? Yes, ma'am. I did. Do you still love her? Ugh. Are you angry at your mother, David? No. I I'm just ashamed of the way she is. David.
Yeah? Are you Merle Poindexter? Yeah. You have a daughter, Mr. Poindexter, named Linda? I do. I speak to her, please? What about? About a man named Michael Gettner. Dr. Berwick, during your interviews with Billy Gettner, was there anything in his behavior which concerned you? There were areas, times, when I felt that Mrs. Gettner showed bad judgment in regard to Billy. Can you be more specific? Yes, on two occasions, Billy arrived in my office wearing clothing that I thought was very inappropriate. Once he was wearing a um, Levi outfit, a jacket, slacks, that belonged to Mrs. Moreland's little girl, Susan. Another time, he was wearing a YWCA t-shirt. Why are these things inappropriate, Doctor? They indicate a lack of sexual role modeling that could be very harmful to Billy. Would this be a problem if he were living with his father? I think not. In a more traditional family, with a mother and father there, uh, this sort of thing recurring would be minimal. Now, this role modeling, I think you called it, is that important? Well, there are several theories about the causes of homosexuality. One of them addresses itself to the environment, the people that a child will try to emulate. That's all role modeling is. And in terms of sexual identity, many consider it to be crucial. Do you, Dr. Berwick? Yes, I do. Have you been able to form an opinion as to who would be the most effective parent for Billy to live with? Well, while I found that Linda Ray Gettner is a warm and loving parent, she cares about her son, and he has warm feelings for her. The fact that Mike Gettner has a history of emotional stability and is part of a traditional family unit, it is my conclusion that Mr. Gettner would offer the boy the best opportunity to develop into a normal young man. Pass witness. Dr. Berwick, was the jeans outfit made of blue denim the sort of thing worn by both boys and girls? Yes, it was. There was nothing bizarre in Billy's appearance that day, was there? He wasn't wearing high-heeled pumps and carrying a purse, was he? <laughs> he was not, of course. But I still consider the clothes to be inappropriate for a boy living in his circumstances. Why? Because what might be acceptable in a heterosexual family unit is not so when done in the context of a homosexual family unit. The second has to be, ought to be more circumspect, more restrained. All right, then the YWCA t-shirt. Are you aware that Billy takes a class at the YWCA? No. Are you aware that the YWCA gives numerous classes for boys? No, I'm not, but that wouldn't change my opinion one way or the other. When you have a sensitive issue here, that, that Mrs. Gettner is aware of, and she's a bright, intelligent lady, in my opinion. She has a responsibility to meet that special need and not to advance this uh, YWCA sort of experience. Pass the witness. Mr. Sidowitz, anything to add? I have some questions, Your Honor. Doctor, have you ever heard of the Cut It Out School of Psychology? I have not. Well, that's when you say to a patient who's doing something wrong, uh, cut it out. Now, did you ever say to Mrs. Gettner uh, that such and such conduct, given your sexual preference, may be unwise, could be misunderstood, therefore cut it out? No, I never said that to Mrs. Gettner. Thank you. Barbara? Where are they? Done with Berwick, that ox tail. The lady, Dr. Tibbetts, she's up there now. Doing better than I expected. No, not better than I did. Here, look at that. Now, I'm going to invent a candy bar and name it out of order. You save a fortune on labeling. You really think you can get any of this stuff in? Well, maybe. It depends on how holy Linda Ray's ex-husband tries to paint himself. See, the more moral and Christian he tries to appear, the better shot we'll have.
And were the court to award custody of Billy to his father, what do you think would be the effect on the boy? Well, it would certainly say something to Billy about society's disapproval of his mother. That would have a great deal of negative effect on Billy. And in general, you'd say Billy is happy, well-adjusted, normal. Pass the witness. Dr. Tippett, can you think of any problems little Billy might encounter due to the particular mode of his upbringing? Objection, Your Honor. Too speculative. Your Honor, we have just listened for the last ten minutes to the witness speculate what might befall Billy if we take him away. I see no difference. I'll allow a hypothetical question. All right, then. Let's assume that we have a hypothetical situation in which there is a little boy, about nine years old, named Billy, who is being raised in a lesbian family unit in this county. Could that little Billy have some additional problems? Yes, I guess he might. Could you tell us what those problems might be? If we, as a society, could accept the differences of other people, then I see no problem. If we make it difficult for people who are different from us, then I can see that society might also punish the child. Ma'am, we're not litigating society, although sometimes it seems so. What we're litigating is the custody of this child. Now, what kind of problems are we talking about? I think there will be people who will not like his mother, who will disagree with her lifestyle. All right, now that's one problem. What else? I'm at a loss. That's the only problem you can think of? Some people are not going to like his mother? This hypothetical child might run into all sorts of problems, or none. Are you a married lady, Dr. Tippett? Not at present. Do you have any children? One son, Jim. How old is he? 24. Does he have any children? One boy. And do you have any preference as a mother as to whether your son is a homosexual or not? Just answer yes or no. I can't answer any yes or no. It wouldn't matter to you if your son was a homosexual? I can't give a blanket yes or no to that. Well, ma'am, either it matters or it doesn't. I don't know what you mean by matters. Do you know what I mean by prefer? Do you know what the word prefer means? that I would pick one over the other. Agreed. So would you prefer your son to be homosexual or heterosexual? Heterosexual. Well, what about your grandchild? Prefer him to be homosexual or heterosexual? Heterosexual. All right, heterosexual. Now, would you want your child to be raised in a homosexual home or a heterosexual one? I don't care, frankly. You don't care? You prefer whether they're one or the other, but you don't care how they're raised? That's right. I wouldn't care. Pass the witness. Any further questions? All right, you're excused. Step down. Call Michael David Gettner. Michael David Gettner to the stand. Right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony about John. Him. The case now pending John, court. You've you got to lay low with him. I'm Stabler brings up church and morality. We've got a shot, but it's got to be Stabler who introduces it before it won't be allowed. Thanks, Coach. Mr. Gettner, what is your occupation, please? I'm an airlines mechanic. How long have you been an airlines mechanic? Going on 12 years. Same employer all that time? Yes, ma'am. You and your wife and son live in Lincoln? And my boy, David. 
Of course, and your boy, David. And it is your contention in this case that you can provide a better home for your son, Billy, than his mother can. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It's absolutely correct. No further questions? Stabler. Mr. Kidner, <clears throat> you say you're uh, an airline mechanic for 12 years. How are you paid on that job? Is that uh, by the week, by the month, by weekly, what? By the hour. <laughs> by the hour. No, I mean, how often do you get your checks? Twice a month. And you have seniority in your job? I do. Do you have any outstanding debts? On the camper, that's all. And you pay child support, do you? Yes, sir. Mr. Gettner, what sort of uh, activities do you and your family participate in? We hunt together, fish together. Go gig and bullfrogs together. <laughs> Go what? Bullfrogs, please? Gig. Uh, Go gig and bullfrogs. Oh, yeah. Now, Mr. Gettner, are you a Christian man? Are you a regular church goer? As regular as I can. And when you say that, are you referring to the fact that sometimes you have to work on a Sunday? Yes, sir. But when you do, your wife and your sons go to church? Yes, sir, they do. A lot has been made about a car that you purchased for your eldest son. Now, was that in any way a bribe no, sir. to get him away from his mother? No, sir, it was never a bribe. I mean, I know it was important to me when I was his age to have a car. But a uh, bribe, it, no, sir, never. Mr. Gettner, if this court and its wisdom by and through the jury decide to give you your other child, Billy, will you take care of his needs? Food, clothing, shelter, moral training, all the things that a young child needs. Yes, certainly will. And are you asking the jury to do just that? I am. Press witness. Mr. Gettner, I get the picture of you being a very temperate Christian man. Well, I tried. Were you trying in 1971 when you were arrested for driving while intoxicated? I learned a very valuable lesson from that. Very valuable. Never again had too much to drink from that day to this. As a Christian man, you must have some concept of where the Bible stands on violence. It's against most kinds. Are you a violent man, Mr. Gettner? You hit people when you get mad. <laughs> no, not as a daily rule, no, ma'am. Were you breaking that daily rule in 1959 when you hit Mrs. Gettner and broke her nose? Well... We had an argument, and she spit in my face, slapped me. And I hit her immediately thereafter, and I'm sorry I did that. That I lost my temper. Then you did break her nose. No, I don't remember breaking her nose. Do you remember hitting her in the face? No, ma'am. I, I believe it was on the cheek. <laughs> I stand correct. Where does the Bible stand on abortion, Mr. Gettner? On abortion? I have wondered about this. It is something that has entered 
my mind, and I wondered how God, if he was here with you us, deny how he would look at that it. That you got the daughter of one of your co-workers pregnant and paid for the subsequent abortion? I paid for the abortion, yeah, but I don't know. I was the one that got her pregnant. I, I found out later there were some other guys along the line. But you did have intercourse with her? At one time, one, one time only. And how old were you at that time? 38, 39. 39? How old was the girl? 18, 19, 20, I'm not sure. Doesn't that make her a minor? Understand No, that? she wasn't a minor. She was married, divorced, had a child. True. Once married, she would no longer be considered a minor. So, with a history of drunkenness, physical assault, sex outside of marriage, and paying to terminate a pregnancy, you possibly were responsible for. With this history, you ask for custody of your nine-year-old son? Yes, ma'am. I surely do. Pass the witness. Mr. Gettner, do you deny any of these allegations that as Liebes has made against you? No, sir, I don't. Just one more point. However, did any of these incidents take place after you joined the Calvary Baptist Church? No, sir, they were all before. They were all way, way before. That's what I thought. No further questions. Let's examine what this case is about first. It's not about the rights of my client, I get it. And it's not about the rights of Linda Ray Gettner. It's not about the rights of the daughters of Belitis or any other cause. It's about the most important thing in the world, the life of a child, the life of little Billy Gettner. Now, the law says that there must be a material and substantial change of circumstances in order to justify a realignment of custody. <coughs> Let's see about that. What changes have there been in the life of Linda Ray Gettner? Well, she's now a lesbian. They live together in a lesbian family unit. Family, whatever happened to that word family. She refuses to give up her homosexual lifestyle, even for the one son she has left. And her oldest son has left her and moved in with his father. That's surely a material change of circumstances. Another change is, before no one knew about her being a lesbian. And now this lawsuit has brought it out. And if Billy goes back to that home, all of his little friends are going to know about his mother now. That's surely a change. Let's move on to the next topic. The best interest of William Jason Gettner. The best interest. Which home? Compare the two. Which home is in the best interest? Well, Let's talk about that. Couldn't take it in there, huh? No. No, I couldn't. Well, it's not much better outside. <clears throat> in the front of the courthouse, we got the Reverend Billy Joe something. Thumping on his Bible and damning you both to hellfire. Out the back, we've got a group as gay as the birthday tablecloth, talking about gay is the only way. Me and Linda Ray in the middle. Well, there's one good thing, though. Once it gets to the jury, it won't take them long to reach a verdict. Why? December 16th, Christmas time coming up. Not one of those people is going to want to be sequestered over the holidays. 
Don't you worry, honey bunch. Everything is going to be just fine. Court's in session. We'll go back on the record now. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict in regards to the matter before this court? Yes, we have, Your Honor. May I have it, please? Clerk will read the verdict. Do you find there's been a substantial and material change in the conditions affecting Billy Gettner and that his best interests are served by transferring managing conservatorship to Michael Gettner? Jury votes yes, 10 to 2. We lost him. Come on. Hey, Mom! Can I stay over at Josh's tonight? Why not? How would you like to spend Christmas out to your daddy's place? All of us, you mean. Just you. How come? Well, the court, that's those people down at the custody hearing. They think you'd be better off living with Daddy in the land. Living there? That's right. But I don't want to live there. I want to stay here with you. Well, I know. And we want that, too. But... I guess that, you know, we just didn't explain it good enough to the judge. So what we're going to do... We're going to get another judge. And we're going to explain it better to him. We're going to tell him... how much love there is in this house... and how we all want to be together... And
present before Christmas. Um, soon goes for you. I know. I'll wait. What I got you doesn't fit, or you don't like the color or anything like that, we can exchange it. Don't you worry about hurting my feelings or anything dumb like that. Your feelings aren't dumb. Crocodile. 